Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to our Facebook live stream straight from the Skokie TSC Technical Support Center. I'm John Dixon. I'll be with you this evening to go through some ABS troubleshooting and diagnostics. Uh, real quick before we begin, I know I've got uh, several people watching. I'll try to get to all the shout outs. So I just want to say hey to Jerry in Algonquin. I know he's watching with a bunch of uh, ASA techs out there at a barbecue, so thanks for that. All right, uh, moving right along. Today's workshop is going to cover um, some Ford vehicles, uh, ABS systems on uh, Ford Escapes from 09 to 13, Mercury Mariners, Mazda Tributes. Uh, you'll also find similar systems and components on on other vehicles. So, you know, sit back, take notes, ask some questions down below. Uh, they're going to feed me the questions. I'm going to do my best to get to them uh, during the broadcast. And if not, uh, I'm going to sit down and, uh, and get to those uh, tonight afterwards so um, we can get those all answered for you if there's anything you're wondering about. Uh, but, you know, like I said, a lot of the skills that you can gain from today's program uh, will help you diagnose other ABS vehicles as well. All right, so today's vehicle, we have a uh, 2009 Ford Escape. It comes to us with its ABS and its traction control light on. Uh, in addition, it's got some odd kind of braking, drivability type symptoms that last four, three, two miles per hour before it stops. Uh, you'll feel the pedal pulsate, but not a pedal pulsation like if you have rotor run out or anything like that. Now, this is a little bit different. Um, what's going on with this one is that uh, the ABS, you can feel the ABS pump come on and you can feel it pulse one of the calipers. feels like it's in the front. Uh, so hopefully that ties in with our code. We'll see if we can get that together and uh, lead you right through to a diagnosis. So uh, like I said, you know, just driving it, you look around the pavement's dry. I drove it earlier before all this rain, but um, you know, right before it stops, you'll feel the brake pulses uh, like it's trying to make an ABS stop even though it doesn't need to. So let's jump into our scan tool right now. We'll go ahead and uh, scan for some codes. All right, I've already got the scan module in the vehicle, so I'm going to go into the uh, ABS part and the codes menu. And uh, it's been on for a couple trips at this point today. So I'll look in the memory codes. All right, now with a Ford vehicle, whenever you do the uh, key on engine off self-test, whether you're in ABS or powertrain, doesn't really matter. Uh, sometimes you'll hear like some relays click or on the ABS, you'll hear the uh, pump and motor run. And that's just the system doing a self-check, something kind of unique to Ford vehicles, uh, something kind of cool. So you know, keep, keep an eye out for that. It actually checks a few of the circuits live for you. All right, so here's our code. You see we've got a C1233, which is described as the left front wheel speed sensor input missing. Okay, uh, I looked up this code description a little bit earlier, and uh, it's the, the possibilities for that are uh, an open bias voltage between the sensor and the computer, or open signal return between the computer and the sensor, or also possibly uh, physical damage to the reluctor ring or to the uh, or improper air gap between the sensor and the reluctor ring. We'll look at those components in a minute, but since I'm, I'm at the uh, scanner right now, let's look at some data. Get to our data menu and see what kind of data this, uh, this Ford will show us. Wow, okay, it's quite a long data list. Um, it's a lot of parameters to look at at once. Uh, not only is that super busy, you know, some cars will have more than this. Uh, some earlier cars will only give you the wheel speed sensors and then the brake on off switch. Uh, but this one here, um, it's too much to look at. Plus, if you've got all that on the screen, uh, it kind of slows down the, the refresh rate. So uh, what I want to do is show you right now how to make a custom data list. So I'm going to deselect everybody here. And then I'm just going to pull the wheel speed sensors, left rear, right front left front, right rear, and uh, we'll look at these right here, okay? Um, so we've got somebody spinning the wheels for me right now, and you see we're maintaining a, about a constant two, three miles per hour. This is a really great mode to use here in list view. Uh, if you've got somebody else to drive the vehicle for you, it's like having four separate digital speedometers. You can watch the scanner, you know, don't do it and drive at the same time, it's way too distracting. Um, the other thing that you can do is uh, drop these down right here and you can get a graph view. Okay, 
You can get a graph view of uh, each, each sensor. And so the good news is here is that we do have mile per hour readout for both the left front and the right front. If anybody was wondering like, hey, why did he pull all the wheel se speed sensors up? He's got a code for the left front. Well, I know I've got at least one that's good to compare it to so we could see what's going on. So the good news is I know that at least the wiring uh, is mostly good. Uh, I've, I've got a bias voltage going. I got a signal coming back because uh, this mile per hour value that we get on the scan tool is an interpreted value. Okay, uh, the pulses that the sensor makes are sent to the ABS control unit and it does some math and it translates that into the miles per hour that we see on our speedometer or in this case on our scanner screen. Okay, uh, so at this point we don't have enough information to make a call on what this thing needs. Uh, so uh, we're going to jump into it with some different tools in just a second, uh, but I'm going to go ahead over here and I've got a mock-up off of another Ford Escape, same parts as are, that are on this one, and we're going to go ahead and uh, look at the sensor and some of the other things. Right here we've got uh, a MR, our magneto-resistive type of uh, wheel speed sensor, along with um, on our axle right here, it's got a reluctor ring. So you'll notice when I turn the hub, the axle turns, and the teeth on the reluctor ring we are going to go past the sensor. Okay? So what happens there is there's a build up and breakdown in magnetic field and it makes the sensor will send pulses back to the computer. The computer can decide how fast we're going. Okay? Um, we've got some additional types of sensors right here. This is off of a backing plate from a GM vehicle. This is a VR, variable reluctance, or a magnetic sensor. Uh, this vehicle would have a reluctor ring that would spin in this bore right here that would be inside the rotor hub or uh, possibly uh, on the axle, similarly to the uh, escape we have going here. Um, this, this type of sensor will give us an AC signal. Okay, AC voltage gets sent to the computer. Uh, the computer has to convert it to DC. Uh, which is another extra process, kind of slows down everything. Uh, but also, these sensors aren't as accurate. They don't have the, quite the resolution that today's digital sensors do. Uh, so they, these only like sense four or five miles per hour and up. These other sensors, the digital ones, can sense all the way down to a fraction of one mile per hour, plus they can tell forwards and backwards. That kind of information is super helpful if the vehicle's got like park assist, collision mitigating brakes, um, any sort of obstacle detection, things like that. All right, here's another type of sensor right here. Uh, it's integral to this hub. This is a hub off the rear of a front wheel drive vehicle. You notice that we don't have um, any uh, drive axle uh, coming through here. The sensor's right here in the back. Okay, uh, it's a digital sensor. It reads magnetic teeth in the reluctor inside the bearing. This one's super easy to change because it just bolts on and off the axle um, as opposed to uh, this cartridge type of bearing here which is a little bit more difficult. Uh, this has to be pressed in and out of the knuckle, be it front or rear. Okay. Uh, you have to be careful when you're pressing this, and one of the things you have to figure out is you have to look at usually the sensors at the back of the bore, and this is going to get pressed in. You have to make sure you have the magnetic exciter ring of this sensor going up towards the, uh, the sensor, otherwise you're going to get zero readout at that corner of the vehicle. So you can take something small like this paper clip and tap it right on the sensor there and see if it sticks, okay, like it does on, see on this side. So this is the side that we're going to want to press into the, into the knuckle. Okay, so just a little tech tip right there uh, to make sure that uh, you've got that in order. Okay, the last thing I got for you as far as sensors go is I've got this uh, digital sensor off of a late model Ford. I wanted to point out a couple things. First of all, if you notice how long this wiring harness is, okay, and it's for good reason. This is out at the wheel end. And uh, this sensor harness is going to run up the knuckle, maybe over on the control arm of the inner fender, uh, get this up somewhere nice and high so that water, road salt, different things like that can't get into the end of this connector. All right, you'll notice that at the sensor itself and at the, um, at the connector, it's all weather sealed. 
Okay, there's no spaces to like, like on an under hood or under dash connector uh, for you to put uh, pins in and get voltages or anything like that. The other thing you'll notice are these little hold downs. Okay, you're going to want to make sure if you're just changing the sensor, something like this, that you uh, maintain those and make sure that they're in a good spot on the vehicle and you can, uh, you can get these in back into the clip so this can stay out of harm's way. Anything that's hot or can rotate or uh, get pinched in suspension or anything like that. Okay, uh, first live question. We got one from Georgia in Baltimore. Hi, Georgia. Uh, she wants to know, how do you know what kind of sensor it is? Well, there's a few ways you can do that. Uh, you can look for visual cues. Usually the magnetic sensors are, are larger. The digital sensors are kind of tiny. Uh, you can look for cues on the, uh, the way the wiring diagram is labeled, but pretty much all the ABS sensors fall into two buckets, either active or passive sensors. Uh, an active sensor is like our digital sensors where we send them a bias voltage and then depending on what type of IC circuitry they have, they change that voltage and send it back to the processor as a DC pulse. And we're going to look at those in a little bit. Um, the other way would be an, uh, a passive sensor, like an AC pulse generator, which works on like the motor generator principle. In other words, it can make its own voltage. We may send it a little voltage whenever, whenever we key things up uh, to make sure that the circuit works. But those sensors can uh, generate a uh, voltage just by passing a metal reluctor past them, even when they're not in the circuit. Okay, so great question. Thanks for that. Guys, keep them coming. If you've got more questions, uh, just uh, put them in the comments below. Uh, we've got people going through here, through them here, my team, and uh, they're going to try to get me uh, the next few questions. So uh, as we move along, I just kind of want to show you how we're going to we're going to go over to our oscilloscope here in just a second and uh, get it hooked up. So before we leave the mock-up, though, I want to uh, show you this. So we're going to be on an uh, active digital sensor. So it's got to stay uh, in the circuit. So my scope is going to have to be hooked up in parallel. So what I would do is I would disconnect uh, the sensor from the harness side of the vehicle. And then I would use this adapter. The adapter's got... Uh, little female pins right here that I can slip over the male pins in the connector just like that and I've got another one uh, for the negative side okay not a lot of room in these connectors but uh, there we go we're on and now we've got uh, male pins left over that we could plug into the vehicle harness side and and keep this all hooked up and then that leaves me a positive and negative to be able to run my scope in parallel and uh, take a look at this. Okay, And you'll see uh, that's just the way that we've got the left front and the right front hooked up on the escape today. Uh, we're going to get down to that in a minute. Uh, what's important though is that you keep both sides of that connector indexed when you take it apart so that the positive stays on the positive side and the negative stays on the negative side uh, so the signal doesn't get confused or knocked out totally. Um, so I've got the wiring diagram for the escape pulled up right here. You can see I've got the left front wheel speed sensor right here. The positive is a violet wire with a white tracer. Uh, the ground or the negative is a yellow wire. And then the right front sensor is uh, the positive is a gray and violet. And the ground is just a violet. So, uh, you know, you can, you know, for today we hooked up in the, in the um, fender well. Okay, so we went right to the connector, so it's pretty easy to keep the wires straight. Sometimes, though, those connectors are kind of hidden away, uh, and we have to go right to the ABS module itself, and, we, and we'll back probe in at the ABS module, and, uh, you know, all, all of these pins are together. Here's the module here. You see this one's got 46, 47 pins, uh, so that, that might be difficult to keep track of everything. So we're going to go ahead over to our oscilloscope. Okay, um, we're hooked up on both sides, so you see uh, the vehicle's already keyed up because we, uh, we had our scanner on. One of the things you want to make sure, uh, if you're going to hook your, your, your scanner in and get in there in parallel, you want to make sure that you don't make and break these, these connections um, with the key on. Turn the key off, make and break the connections. Uh, just for the sa safety of the circuit and also sometimes if you open that uh, then the, the PCM, I'm sorry, the ABS module will stop sending its bias voltage. Alright, we got another question just came in. Steve from St. Louis. Hey Steve, 
uh, wants to know, can you use a DVOM to check an MR type digital wheel speed sensor like we've got here? Uh, Steve, that's a great question. The answer is, the short answer is yes. You can use a DVOM to look at these types of sensors. But as you're going to see here on the scope screen in a second, that there's a specific voltage we're looking for for the on signal and a specific voltage for the off signal. And um, what your voltmeter will do, since it can only uh, ship numbers to its screen as fast as your eyes can perceive them, is it'll average the on and off voltage, and you're just going to get one number. And, and it's really important for us to see to see too. So the DVOM is helpful, but it's only going to tell you part of the story. So if you want to make sure the circuit's good, DVOM is a great way to go. So you know, don't want to discour discourage DVOM use. They're great tools, um, but they're only one of the tools that you need here. All right, so if we look up on the screen, um, channel A, my green channel, is my left front wheel speed sensor, and channel B, the purple one, is my right front wheel speed sensor. And as you can see, since I've got some lines bouncing up and down on the screen here, I definitely do have a pattern. I've got my wheels still spinning over here. All right, so we need to zoom in on this and get a better look. So uh, go down here, and I could zoom this channel up. Okay, I got to pull my scale back down, so I'm in pretty, pretty close now. Okay, ah, there we go. And let's do the uh, right front so we can get a, we'll do the same thing to the right front so we can have a good comparison. And there it is. All right, um, still looking pretty muddy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the filter on. Most of the digital storage oscilloscopes that you use are going to have filters that you can activate. If you notice that, that that really tweaks the pattern nicely. Activate the filter on the other side. All right, great. Now, as you can see, we've only got, looks like, uh, one or two pulses going by every time the screen refreshes. Those represent those teeth making and breaking uh, that magnetic field past the sensor. All right, and that's all well and good, but in order to, to really diagnose this and see what's going on, we need to look at maybe a complete revolution. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to manipulate my time scale. And stretch things out a little bit, or actually crunch it up a little bit. Okay, and if we watch the green versus the purple pattern, as you compare these, everywhere that the green tooth lines up over the purple tooth, that's when they're turning the same speed and it's sending the same signal. But if you watch the green every once in a while, like there and there, there's a space. Okay, it's kind of an extended on or off period. So let me freeze the pattern. And uh, we'll get a good look at that. All right? It's not on the screen right now, so let me rewind a couple frames. Ah, there we go. Okay? So that's an extended off period right there. Okay, so what's going on there is the when this signal, and remember the green is the left front, when this signal gets sent to the computer, the computer thinks, oh, the left front wheel is already stopped. It must be locking up, and that's why it'll actuate the ABS. Okay? So that would explain the symptom, and then since this is still working, okay, and this is intermittent, that might also explain our, our code. Okay, we got another uh, question here. Uh, it's from Sam in San Diego. Hey, Sam, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it says, why doesn't the voltage change on the sensor at different speeds? Okay, maybe I think Sam's asking us about the amplitude of our waves here. He's wondering why the voltage uh, doesn't change as we change speeds because we are accelerating and decelerating. Granted, we're only at one to three miles per hour because that's where our problem is occurring. Um, but but that's what's up. So I think what what's what Sam's referring to is if we go to a here's a pattern I saved from a, a AC signal. Okay, if you'll notice the amplitude of these waves change. Okay, and that's because this sensor is accelerating and decelerating. Okay, so on an AC uh, generating uh, sensor, the faster you spin it, the more voltage it'll get, and the slower, the less voltage, uh, et cetera. So um, anyway, Sam, great question. Thanks for that. So there's your comparison, and that's why you might be seeing different amplitudes on different waves. Okay, let's go back to our, um, our escape. So one of the things you could do on the sco scope screen that's really cool is um, since it's digital and you can freeze it, is you can pull down rulers. Like see this yellow ruler I'm pulling down from the top? I'm going to place it right on the top of the wave. I can grab myself another one. 
and drop it on the bottom of the wave. And the thing that you can see is that uh, this particular sensor is active uh, between about uh, 10 and a half and 11 volts and its switching voltage between on and off is about 300 millivolts. Okay? So that's, that's how the uh, computer knows whenever it switches 300 millivolts, that's the difference that it, that it makes when a tooth uh, goes by. And again, this one's working just fine. Um, but actually what we'd be more concerned with on this one, you know, besides that, uh, if you just, let me pull these rulers off really quick, is the fact that we've got this extended off period, okay? And that's enough to uh, tell us what's going on. Okay, so last thing I want to take a look at over here, I want to go back to my mock-up and just grab this axle, okay, and show you because this is pretty much what our fix is going to look like. Our fix is just going to look like um, replacing this axle, okay? Oh, I got another live question came in. Dave from Chicago. Uh, Dave says, hey, what if you don't have a lab scope? Can you pick up the glitch on the scan data? Well, uh, Dave, hopefully you were with us a little bit earlier when we were on the scanner and uh, the scan data wasn't really lending itself to finding this glitch. Uh, scanners are great tools and they're an integral part of ABS diagnostics, uh, but unfortunately when the, when the problem is this fine, as you can see on the scope screen right now, uh, when the problem is this fine, a lot of times you can't pick it up. Uh, lab scopes aren't necessary for every single ABS problem, but they are a huge help uh, when you've got something that's, um, a, you know, a very small problem or, you know, something like this at, at the onset might not even code. Uh, but back to my um, ABS reluctor ring right here, what happens if you live uh, or work in the, in the rust belt like I do here near Chicago, uh, we, we have a big problem with rust and what happens is the um, housing of this CV shaft will rust and rust kind of grows. Well, the reluctor ring doesn't grow. So what happens is it ends up cracking and splitting. Uh, I've got a picture of the one on this vehicle, uh, vehicle, if we could fly that in right away. Everybody see that? See that split in that reluctor ring? So that's why we have that extended off period because of that space. Okay, that space exists there, it changes the, the distance between the two teeth, so the computer picks up on that. All right. Um, the other thing that could happen whenever the reluctor ring cracks is it could be allowed to turn at a different speed than the axle. So if you just picture this thing spinning as we accelerate and the tires are trying to turn faster and faster to keep up with the vehicle or to propel the vehicle down the road, uh, this can freewheel and turn at different speeds, which can play havoc with like stability control systems, which are really concerned with uh, keeping all the, the wheels turning the same speed, because if they're not, that might mean that the, the vehicle's uh, oversteering or understeering, it's out of control. And then of course, uh, right before we stop, we might have that ABS actuation. So what was happening with this one is uh, the axle was still spinning from the inertia of being uh, attached to the tire and wheel, and going on down the road, and then uh, the uh, reluctor ring coasted to a stop before this thing did. Okay, so anyway, that'll be our fix. That'll be really simple. Uh, go ahead and uh, that's what I'll do when we're done here tonight. Is uh, go ahead and change this axle out. It'll have a brand new reluctor ring because remember we verified with the scanner and with the scope that our wiring is good and that the sensors were capable of sending a, a signal. Uh, back to the back to the processor. Okay, looks like we're going to have one more question before we go. I got Eli from Detroit uh, wants to know, uh, John, how did you become a guru? All right, well, uh, Eli, it's, Eli, it's a long story, but it's uh, it's been been a long path. Uh, I've been in the automotive industry about 24 years. Uh, before that, you know, I think uh, thanks to my dad, I was always around cars and tools and things like that as a kid. Uh, and it just kind of stuck with me, and this is uh, always what I've enjoyed doing. So, uh, really happy to be able to be part of Garage Gurus and uh, travel all over North America and share my information with, uh, you know, technicians that are trying to gain more skills. So, it was great chatting with everybody. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on social media. Uh, if you have a question that didn't get answered, or if you're thinking of one now, as you're. Uh, as we're signing off here, go ahead and throw it down in the comments. I'd appreciate it. I'll do my best to get to it in uh, the next 24 hours or so. Uh, just throw it in there. We'll see you next time on the next Facebook Live. Have a good night.